Welcome to Family Church, everybody. How you doing this morning? Everybody awake? Did you get a, get a donut? I want to read. I want to read Psalm 13 and 6 to you. It says this. It says, "I've thrown myself headlong into your arms." I'm celebrating your rescue. I'm singing at the top of my lungs. I'm so full of answered prayers. And that's Psalm 13, 6. Don't you feel that way today? If you've joined with us in 21 days of, of prayer, uh, you're on fire for the Lord. And I just have to say that, that through this time, I've seen God answer so many prayers. So when I read this scripture, I was like, this is the one for today. I'm going to read it again. I've thrown myself headlong into your arms. I'm celebrating your rescue. I'm singing at the top of my lungs. I'm so full of answered prayers. Can you give somebody or give God a hand clap of praise this morning? God, you are good. today, God, because of your goodness, God, because of who you are, God, but because of the goodness of God, because of the things that you've done, the mighty works of your hands, God, Lord, we give you praise today. All right, here we go. One, two, ready. Shout your praise, Jesus, we 
kind of good to shout a little bit, right? All right. There's no better name to lift up than the name of Jesus. We are so glad to see your faces. As they say it in the South, we're tickled pink to see you. I'm pink today, by the way. We're tickled pink to see you. Uh, everybody hold up your wristband. <clears throat> Go, go give them a hug or fist bump. If they're, they're yellow, maybe elbow bump. If they're red, give them a little space and give them an air hug. About that. Let's let some nobody know how happy you are to see the house of God today. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
thanksgiving and praise and how God stepped in when I was get up, God stepped in. You know, write your, your own song this morning. Give God praise for your life experiences. In the high times, thank Him. God, you've been great. You've been my provider. But God, you've been with me in the valleys as well. That's what praise and worship and thanksgiving and where, that's kind of where it starts in your heart and your life. Amen. Amen. Giving God praise for what He's done. And telling the world and publishers that, you know, my God's been faithful. He is excellent and worthy to be praised, but he's been working in my life as well. He's been working in your life as well. All right, for the next five seconds, I want you to just give God thanks and praise for something that he's done in your life these last few weeks. Lord, I thank you for your forgiveness your mercy, dear God. God, I thank you've been my provider, Heavenly Father. God, I thank you've been with us in this pandemic, dear God, that you've been my peace, you've been my comfort, God, you've been my provider, God, because of you, I have food and clothing, God, because of you, I have a house and a place I can stay, God, thank you, Lord, for watching over my home and my family, dear God, my children, dear God, God, you've been great and excellent in this place, in my life, in Jesus' name, you say thank you, Lord, amen, give God a praise, a hand clap. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. You may be seated if you like this morning. For everyone joining us online, Facebook and YouTube, God bless you. It is so good to know that you're with us today. Type in hallelujah or a big amen this morning. Amen. We want to know that God's working in your life also. Amen. Amen. You know, you've heard the song or the statement that no man is an island, right? That's one reason why we have small groups, because 
for some reason, we don't like to be by ourselves all the time, right? right? Sometimes you like to re- reach out and hang out and visit. And no better place you can do that is at a small group here at Family Church. Amen. Uh, there's different places, there's different things, activities you can do. But some of the main things that you can experience in small groups at Family Church is that, that you're going to know God. How are you going to know God and not in a small group? Amen. You're going to see God work in other people's lives. And because of that, you're going to say, you know what? If God can work in their life, their testimony, their show forth the praises of God, he can work in my life. And through that small group, many times you find connections and people that are going to help you find freedom in Christ. Amen. People that are pray for you, people that are with you. Amen. And when you know God and you find freedom from the addictions and hangings up this life. Amen. Know that Christ is your and your strength. You're, you're going to discover something about you that God, God designed you for a purpose. Amen. As an encourager, a prayer warrior. Amen. You'll find your purpose and then you'll be able to begin making your difference where God has called you to. Your job, your neighborhood, and your family. Amen. So if you're new to family church, we want you to know God. Amen. And when you begin to know God and understand how, how God can work in your life, you'll find freedom. Amen. You'll discover your purpose, and then you'll make a difference. Amen. In this world, in your life. Amen. Can you say amen to that? If you'd like to do that, we got fa- we got we also fast track coming up next Sunday. Amen. Fast track. If you're ready to join Family Church, or maybe you want to know a little bit more about Family Church, take, taking that next step, I want you to let me know today. Give me a shout this week, and we're going to have a fast track next Sunday. Amen. We're, we're looking forward to that. At 1230, lunch is going to be served, and then we'll do our fast track, which is our grow track. Amen. All in one day. So uh, give me a shout. Sign up at familychurch.net. Let us know how many is going to be with your group, and uh, we're excited about that. Also, we guess what? The best part, parents, we got child care. All right. Yeah. I think I'm going to go to uh, growth track just to get the child care. You know? so, so, amen. If you want to know more about, about Family Church, wherever you're at, you can log on to our church website, familychurch.net. You can learn more about what's going on. You can receive emails, text messages, all those different things there. You can text text me to 313131 and know more about what's going on or what's happening. Like this next month in September, we're going to have grill and chill. Yeah. Amen. It's going to be September 6th, about 5 o'clock at the Parsonage, out on the lawn there, the driveway, uh, the parking lot will be available. So if you want to come grill and chill the house with us over at the church, bring your family, bring your bicycles, bring your basketballs. We're going to have a great time of just hanging out, amen, and just visiting. Amen. It's like a large, large, small group, so it's going to be a good time. If you're 50 plus, God bless you. We appreciate you getting out of bed this morning. <laughs> Amen. And come up here. Amen. We're going to be ha- hanging out at Harry J's and uh, what is that? Old Monroe? Moscow. Amen. Uh, Moscow Mills. Amen. Here at uh, September. Hang out with, with you there at Harry J's and Moscow Mills. Great time. If you need more information, see my amazing mother in law, Dinah Dunlap. Amen. And she'll give you all the details on that and reserve you a seat. Amen. So uh, I can't say enough about this next group here, Dreamer. If you're a Dream Teamer, clap your, your hands. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And if you've not got your Dream Team t-shirt, that, that means you're probably not a part of the, the Dream Team. So we want to we want to get you a t-shirt, and we want you to, to join up on Dream Team. What does that mean? Well, we need people that are techie. We need people that know how to sing and play instruments. We need people that know how to teach. Uh, welcome guests. Take, take care of some of the, the projects here at Family Church. There's a place for you at Family Church that you can make a difference. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for people that make a difference. Amen. So if you want more information, let me know. Talk to me. There is great places that you sign up and share your, your gift and serve. Amen. And make a difference in people's lives. Thank you, Jesus. And everyone that's able to give this morning, we're going to 
get ready to receive our Sunday morning offering here. Just want to say a big, big thank you to those that are watching, those that are here in the service today. There's uh, just so, we're so blessed to know that you have taken steps of faith to give the tithe, to give your offering. We have people here that they're gifted in giving. We thank you for that, that you lend your talents to God. Amen. Making a difference in our media team and the projects here at Family Church. Thank you for giving unto the Lord. Amen. I think we're investing not just in this life, but we're investing in people's eternity. Amen. And believing God for that. A couple of different ways you can give this this morning. We have offering plates up here that you can be offering an offering plate. Here's a few moments. But you can go online to familychurch.net. You can do our text to give, or you can do bill pay, or just drop into the mail to 1586 Dwellow Road, Lake St. Louis, Missouri. So thank you for giving. Thank you for being a part of what God is doing in your life. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your blessing. We thank you, God, that we can just can worship you in this offering and investing in the lives, amen, for people's lives for eternity in the wonderful name of Jesus. Can you say amen? God bless you as you give unto the Lord. Kids' church class, our preschool class, high school, college, you may be dismissed. Middle school, you get to join us today. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Man, what an amazing group that just left up the building. Amen. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. It's great to see so many kids here and, and our youth as well. And man, parents, thank you for, for uh, investing in the future, their eternity. Amen. For taking the time to get up on a Sunday morning. Amen. And come and just worship God. Amen. And then lead by example. Amen. That makes a huge difference. Amen. When you lead by example. Amen. And God bless all our teaching uh, team, they're the amazing, amazing, amazing group. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I tell you what, I'm just still riding wave of uh, yesterday. Amen. The last 21 days has been absolutely amazing. Praying and fasting and just believing God, do great things. I've even lost a few, few pounds. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. I'm, well, I'm not going to say, I don't know if I've had a cheeseburger these last 20 days or not. I don't know. I know I did not yesterday, so, or this morning, so, amen. So, so, but praise God that we have taken this time to draw closer. I wonder if there's any day 22 people here. We've done it for the last 21 days, but uh, Pastor Chris said this, there any day 22 people got to just continue on uh, Praying and fasting, amen, in, a, in a, a new normal for your life, amen, a new normal that draws you closer to God, a new normal that helps you discover your purpose, a new normal that you're making a difference in people's lives, amen, you're serving those around you, then instead of being the taker all the time, you're, you're the one that's giving, you're the one that's worshiping, you're the one that's serving, 
you've learned what a huge blessing it is to be able to give. Amen. There's times when we receive, but man, the Jesus said blessing, wow, is when you give, can be able to give. Amen. I want our cups to just to run over day. Amen. And to where some collateral damage happens when we leave this place. Where people are blessed, where people are encouraged, where they get some of my peace, a little bit of joy rubs off on them. Amen. Because what God is doing in my life. Amen. Praise God. Can you say amen? Everyone said, Mark, it's good to see you. Yeah, amen. Amen, amen. God bless you. So glad to see you here today. Amen. It would say emotions. Amen. You know, has anyone ever asked you lately, how are you doing? How are you doing? Amen. How are you doing? How are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's kind of hard. Maybe it's kind of hard to answer. Do you want to be completely truthful with them right now? Are you going to be like a big Mack truck with the, with the dump bed just going to dump, dump on them, you know? Just everything that you've been collecting for the last, you know, six months. Um, but, you know, but seriously, you know, we all have emotions, and there's things that we've been wrestling with, with and going through with, anxiety, frustration, anger, anxious, or just irritated, unsettled. Uh, lots of emotions that have been happening this, this year of 2020. You look on social media, they got a meme for every emotion out there right now, you know? And... Um, you know, just, it's kind of crazy, but, but all of us have emotions, and all of us have been experiencing some good days and rough days, right? But, and some of us are kind of tended to talk about our emotions and, and what they've been in and what's been going on through here. So, but, but I want you to understand that in the Gospels, it records Jesus having emotions. So, Jesus was God, but yet he was, you know, God manifested in the flesh of Scripture just, just talks about that. And one author uh, said there's at least 27 to 39 different emotions recorded in Scripture in the Gospels that, that Jesus expressed during his uh, Gospel messages there. And, for example, when Jesus looked over the city of Jerusalem, all the pe- people that he loved, he, he looked, looked at the city of Jerusalem and how they had wandered away. He was just compassionate and kind of filled with grief a little bit. Uh, because they were missing out on what God had for them. Uh, also, Jesus, he, he, he showed righteous anger toward the hypocrisy of the Pharisees and religious leaders there one day because they, they just lacked the love, the true love and desire. When these 42 followers were sent out into the highways and the byways, then they were making a difference, and when they came back, they were just... Ex- overwhelmed with excitement because of what God had done through them. And Jesus was just overfilled. He was overjoyed at their faithfulness, how they followed and, and just shared the gospel. When his friend Lazarus died, Jesus has had a profound sadness and, and wept over the death, amen, of his close friend. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, um, he felt lonely, anxiety, overwhelmed. Amen. Knowing what was to come, the pain they must endure. There's just, just one emotion I want to talk about today. Amen. And we're going to find that in the book of Luke this morning. Amen. Chapter 7. Amen. Now, it all happened the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and, and many of his disciples went with them in a, in a large crowd. And when they came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was, was a widow, and a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still, and he said, young, young man, I say to you, arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak, and he presented him to his mother. Then fear came on upon all, 
and they glorify God, saying, A great prophet has risen up among us, and God has visited his people. Amen. So, just think about this. Jesus is walking down the road, and there's a funeral procession coming down the road, perhaps the opposite way. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, biblical funerals were a little bit different than they are today. There were no police officers stopping, directing traffic. There were, there were probably mourners. Uh, back then, just hadn't had normal mourners, people crying and mourners, but they were some paid professional mourners. So if you want to pick up a few hour, extra, extra hours, you could go down to the local, you know, funeral home and say, hey, I'd like to sign up, put my name on the list, just be someone to show up at John's funeral and just cry real loud for the family. You could do that. There uh, maybe instruments, tambourines, people making noise, flutes, and, and as they would walk down the street, you would mourn along with the family and the procession there. So just imagine this, all the wailing and crying and sadness. Uh, Jesus walks up on this very emotional and very loud scene. And as Jesus approaches, he begins to, to look and, and observe everything. There's a widow. She just lost her husband. We're not sure how long it had been since she lost her husband. But now, this much, she has lost her only son, which puts her into this unique category that there's no male figure in the house. And so things are going to be really tough from here forward for this lady. We don't know really how old she was, if she was in her, in her 20s or her 30s. The scripture doesn't really go into that information. And we don't know how her husband died or, or how this, her son died or, or how old he was exactly. But we do know this, that most likely he had died the day before because they had their funerals very quickly after they had passed. Now, if you can imagine this, 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 this dear woman overwhelmed with grief. And in verse 13, it says, the Lord saw her. The Lord saw her. In Scripture, there's about 40 different references in the gospel where Jesus saw someone. It's, it's kind of funny to think about. He saw 40 times um, because, you know, um, when Jesus saw somebody, you, you think he sees everybody, right? Jesus saw a lot of people. But what the author here is telling us that Jesus just did see this widow. He saw her, saw her. He just didn't look at a crowd like, oh, yeah, this, this, this. Yeah, didn't see her. But he's something he, he noticed something about her situation. Because there's a difference between looking and seeing. Right? The difference between looking and seeing. And I'm a guy, and I can look and not see stuff, right? I don't always notice. And that can be very difficult for us guys, right? Because uh, um, I'm married to a very beautiful, beautiful lady. Uh, has great hair today, by the way, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because you've ever had, you know... You know your special son walked to you and said, hey, do you like it? And you're trying to replay the last hour. What, what was said to me this last, I mean, the last five minutes. And uh, you're thinking, so, because, you know, uh, our wives probably notice a lot, right? Yeah, right. They notice a lot. So I keep training myself, even though we've been married a few years, we, I keep training myself to notice stuff, you know. So if, you're, if you've if you been married not too long ago, you know, and um, you, um, I want to give you some, some advice. So just two or three times a week, just look at your wife and say, wow, have you done something with your hair? It looks great. Just say that every couple, you know, a few times a week, you know. That'll just help you out. Jesus looks on, and he doesn't ju just see what's going on, but he sees her. He saw her. He notices her. She, he noticed a single mother, a widow that lost her only son. In the middle of this chaos, 
at his funeral procession. Jesus looks on her and sees her. The Lord saw her. And the Lord felt the very, the very, very same thing he feels for each and every one of us when we hurt. So if this morning, if you're afraid, if you're going through something and you're struggling in your life, maybe you're having a hard time trying to figure out where your next paycheck's going to come to pay your bills. Maybe you're right now, you're stressing over that child that has gone off and they're making crazy decisions and you just have anxiety about their life and the choices they're making. Maybe you're aching and hoping that they're going to be with you next Sunday. Jesus feels the very same thing for you as you're hurting, as he did, as he felt for this dear widow who, who was in pain. The Lord saw her, and the Scripture says his heart overflowed. About compassion, that his heart wasn't big enough to, to, to handle all the compassion and feelings that he had for this dear person. That Greek word for compassion is... It basically means this. It means to feel the emotion from your gut. Plus, nisomai, I believe is the right word to say in the Greek. You got to figure that one out. But there's no stronger word in the Greek language to represent, to represent, to explain the depth of compassion that Jesus had for her. One, one Greek scholar kind of said, I'm going to give you a, a word picture to kind of help you understand the amount. So ride with me. We're going down the road a car, and there's a car accident up around the corner. And you're, you're thinking to yourself, man, I hope who's ever involved in that. You get a little cl closer, you, you see a couple of people sit on the edge of the police are there. The fire department is there. They're trying to help these people because they are hurt. And you think, man, I'm just going to pray for these people. I hope they're okay. I hope they'll be all right. See what kind of car it is. Then you realize, I know that car. I know who these people are. Then it hits you. You think, oh my word. I hope they are going to be okay. And it hits you in the gut because you know them. You know. The Lord saw her pain, and he noticed her. And he felt deep down in the core of his gut, and he cared so much for her. I want you to understand, when God sees you, he knows what you're going through. There's not a little bird that falls from the sky that he doesn't notice and understand what's going on. He cares for each and every one of us more than you can imagine. He sees your pain. He hears your heart's cry. He knows when you feel desperate and anxious and it's hard to catch your breath sometimes. The Lord sees you. He notices. He notices what's going on in your life when you're anxious and you feel frustrated. When I typed out that word frustrated last night, I accidentally erased it. But Lord, I don't have this happen very often, but when I'm typing stuff out, I normally like to write my notes. Like I'm just, I just like to write. T typing's a new thing for me. I, I, I hunt and peck when I type. But I said, I got to put the word frustrated back in this morning. So I don't know if you're here this morning or if you're watching online later. If you feel frustrated, God knows what you're going through. That word, that's for you. God knows. He knows when you're frustrated. He notices and he cares for your life. Jesus sees a single mom. She's hurting, and he hurts with her. He grieves for her. He says to her, don't cry. Don't cry. And he stops funeral procession which is completely out of character for a Jewish person. He walks over to the coffin, and all the Pharisees are watching to see what he's going to do because they got enough rules and got like 600-something rules, enough to choke him, Camille, you know, that you don't do. And when he was getting ready to do one of them. They thought, okay, if he touches that coffin, he's unclean. He has sinned. If he touches the dead body, he is unclean. He has sinned. But what does Jesus do? He walks right over to the, the, the little buggy and touches the coffin. 
what's really interesting to see, you know, the coffin's a little bit different back then than they are today. It was probably just a couple boards put together and the top open. You could see the body right there on the road. Jesus walks up and touches the coffin, which was, would shock everybody. He shocks everybody. Everybody's just blown away that he would do that. But Jesus will cross a line for you. The Pharisees, they just were, most of them, their rules were just for the hour show, but because their heart was not where they needed to be. They were just going for show. But Jesus, you know what? I'm, I'm not going for show. There's a person that is hurting. I need to step in and cross and bridge a, a gap that this person needs. Jesus touches the, the, the coffin, probably touches the boy as well. And imagine the gaps, how people are saying, what is going on? No matter what is going on in your life right now, with one touch of Jesus, life can come right back. You think you're in a place that's beyond the reach of the Lord, that the, the Lord would not go there. He'll go there. He'll go to the depths of the ocean. He'll go to the mountain top for you. If you have a, just a mustard seed of faith this morning, I want you to reach out to God wherever you're at. He will bridge a gap. Paul wrote in the book of Romans, there's no height, there's no depth. There's no geographical location on our planet that could keep God's love from loving you this morning. I'm so thankful for that. Peter said this. Peter may have been, may have been there to see this whole entourage take place. Peter wrote, he says, cast your cares upon the Lord. Why? Why do we do that? Because he cares for us. Too many times we, we, we bring and carry our problems with us for years and decades and we think there's no, there's no way that the Lord would want to carry this burden. There's no way the Lord would want to, to unpack what you have accumulated over a lifetime. This morning, I want you to just take a step of faith this morning. Jesus is here. He's walking up and down your road today and he's wanting you to cry out to him. I want you to know that he sees your pain, he sees your hurt, he sees your disappointment in your life. And he wants you to know he wants to stop and minister and touch your life. It just takes one touch this morning. It just takes one moment for the Lord to intervene in your life. One of my favorite scriptures in the book of Psalms, it says, is cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain you. He'll never let the righteous be forsaken. Commit your way to the Lord and trust in him, and he will do it. Another psalm said, I have fainted, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. One of my favorite scriptures is in, in, in Matthew says this. Who's worrying today? Who's worried about something? Come on, be honest this morning. This is for you today. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Okay? It's hard to do. Would you eat or drink? Or about your body. What you wear is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes. There's a lot of th things that I understand worried about, concerned about. But the Lord is wanting you to understand this morning and that your life is way much more than that. He says, you can't add a single hour to your life by worrying. 
said, you looked at the field, the lilies, the flowers. Somehow it just, it happens, it takes care. The Lord is wanting you to know, many of us to know this morning. I'm looking your way, but I see you. I'm looking your direction. So sometimes we think, oh, there's the cross. You're in the ocean, and the ocean waters pass this and by, and you're sitting there waving. Oh, man, I hope the cab can see me. Hello. Sometimes we feel like that. Lord, Lord, do you even see me? Do you even hear me? Yes. Just like you saw a woman that had lost her husband, lost her son. Was probably getting ready to lose everything in her life. And Jesus has said, stop crying. I'm here. He had such overwhelming compassion for her that he had to stop funeral and walk over to the coffin and bring her son back to life. That's exactly what the Lord wants to do in someone's life this morning. He wants to walk right up to where you're at. Put his arms of love and mercy around your life and let you know I'm here. I see what's going on. Would you bow your head? Heavenly Father, I thank you for looking our way. Lord, I thank you for just not looking, but noticing what's going on in each of our lives today, God. God, I just pray that everyone here, everyone watching today will just respond to your love, respond to your mercy and grace, dear God. That there's forgiveness for those that are carrying burdens of sin. God, that there's healing for those that are sick today. For those that are worrying about where the paycheck is going to come from, God, that you're our heavenly provider. That you'll never leave us nor forsake us, dear God. That, that we'll just take this these few moments today, God, and just draw closer to you. In Jesus' name. This morning, if you're carrying around a bag of, bag of habits and hang-ups that's been trying to shake for years, just pray on with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, I am so sorry. I'm sorry, Lord, for my sins and my mistakes, dear God. God, I ask for your forgiveness and grace today, Lord, that you just wash my sin away. God, God that you embrace my life with your, your love and the price you paid on Calvary for my sin. I ask for your forgiveness today, Lord. I pray for that fresh start and the empowering of your spirit in my life, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Would you, would you stand with me this morning? Amen. We want to draw closer to the Lord today, where you're at. This is just your first step. Amen. Take it with you, all your heart. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You.
there's times in our life where we just wonder, does he really know where I'm at? Scripture says is that he sees the little bird when he falls. He knows how many hairs are on your head. Or I always joke, he knows how many fall off already too, you know. But I, in the Old Testament, there's a, a story of Hagar. And she kind of got kicked out. Abraham gave her a jug of water. He said, here's your, go that way. Here's your jug of water. Take your kid later. She went as far as she could go, running out of water. Put her child up under a, a, a tree to kind of shade it from the, the hot sun. And she said, well, at least I can't. At least he'll be over there and I'll be over here. And I just can't, I can just bear to see my child I'll die. I, I got to. We're going to die, so I'd rather some distance. And her prayer was, Lord, see us me. God, just look down. Just look down at my circumstance because I really need you. When I was in the hospital and I was talking to a friend this morning, and it's been about 10 years. And I can remember being in a room and pain. It was probably three o'clock in the morning. I was messed up that night. I turned on the music and this is a song that I played over and over again because when I heard it, the words just reminded me and brought me comfort. God knows exactly where I'm at. Sing with us for a few, few moments here. And even though I walk through, through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear.
the valley of the shadow of today. Oh, your perfect love is casting out fear, even though I'm lost, even when I'm lost in the middle of the storm of this life. over to pray for him this morning. Remind him of God's faithfulness. Remind him he's there in the middle of the night. He's there in the midst of the storm. He's there in the struggles of life. He's a faithful, faithful God. Thank you, Jesus. Cause to thrive in the darkest struggles of our life. Helps God to focus upon you, God, and realize that you're holding on to us, Lord, and you're not going to let us go. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, that there's nothing that can separate us from your love. Not death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things presently going on, or things to, to come tomorrow or the next day. No height, nor depth, or any other creation shall be able to separate us from his love, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Lord, I just pray your peace. Amen. And comfort, dear God, over those this morning that are in the middle of the storms of their life, God. 
God, I just pray that you reassure them today, God, of your faithfulness and your steadiness, dear God, that you're with them each and every step of their day and night, God, that you're with them for the long haul till all the way to the end, Lord. In Jesus' name, you'll never, never let them go. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Stay near, Lord. Stay close. Don't let me wander off, God. Guard my thoughts, Lord. Guard my, my heart, dear God. Let me carry the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the eyes of the enemy. In Jesus' name, I'm going to walk by faith and not by the present circumstance of today or the circumstances of tomorrow, God. I'm going to follow you and trust you. In Jesus' name, I'm going to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm not going to look to the left. I'm not going to look to the right. I'm going to trust in the Lord. In Jesus' name, his word is going to illuminate my path. Amen. The sure foundation. In Jesus' name, praise God. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Don't look behind you. Don't look behind you. See the past mistakes past failures, missed opportunities, bad judgment calls. Don't look in the rearview mirror. Amen. We're going to trust God and move forward from here. Forth in faith. In Jesus' name. He sees you. He just, he's just not looking your way, but no, he's, he's, he's looking at you, kid. He's looking at you. He's looking at you. Look at you never, never say. He's looking at you. I know you feel like there's not much to look at, but he's still looking at you. You know why he's going to? Because he, he loves you. He's never given up on you. No matter what you've done in your past, it's not going to stop him from looking at you and loving you. In Jesus' name. And helping through this time in your life. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I'm going to cut it off here because I could preach another, another hour. Amen. There's such a just a loving, compassion spirit of the Lord in this place. And I pray that you just take as much home with you as you can today and share somebody else. God bless you. You have a great, great rest of the weekend. If you would like to be part of Grow Track next Sunday, be sure to let me know before you head out. God bless.